Hello, uh, now we come to a new section of the uh, Big Data Analytics uh, online course. Uh, this is covering web search and text mining. There are two units here in this section. And uh, here we come to the some of the more basic information retrieval and on web search issues are discussed in this in this first unit. As always, we're using clouds. The analytics we're running in this case are the analytics of crawling the web, the analytics of classifying queries, the analytics of classifying web pages. And all of this is collaborative because the world is collaborating to produce the web. And then this, the web is certainly big data, and we're solving problems here on what we sometimes call lifestyle informatics. Because our lifestyle is built around the web and searching it. I'm not certain that's the, what is meant by lifestyle informatics back in this down here, which is probably more health oriented meaning, but uh, that's how I'd like to do it. So first we'll just uh, discuss the problem, what we have to solve, and uh, with some numbers to, to, to scope it. All right, so in this lesson we'll first uh, discuss the um, size of the search. And uh, here we have a little bit of data on um, how big um, searches of a certain number of words are. So here we have queries rather. Uh, you're up to over eight words and starting with one word. And you can see it's pretty uniform from one word to three and a half words. But then it falls off reasonably rapidly. And if anything, there's a slight trend to longer queries. The average is around uh, three words per query. This comes from 2009, but I doubt it was changed dramatically. Um, this is the usual problem with the web. It's not always easy to get exactly the data you want. Here we have a number of searches per day. And um, in 2013, it is only, it's almost uh, six billion. This is um, Google's um, Google searches per day. Um, this is six billion searches per day. And here's the annual number. It's too large a number for me to think about. Notice when they started, they got 10,000 searches per day. That was 1998. And it's grown pretty systematically. Maybe like 2011 to 2012 was actually only a 10% uh, increase. Uh, this is more like a 20% increase. So it's it's growing, but uh, uh, six billion per day is not so trivial. And remember, we have to respond to all of these in a fraction of a second. That's uh, 0.15 is my magic number second, seconds, because brains, your brain doesn't do much in 0.15 seconds. But it does a lot even in one second. So it gets very frustrated if you wait a second. Um, if you look at the, when we go to the web, as we'll note, we'll have to take all these documents and divide them up into so-called tokens and terms. And that is right, the number of terms is roughly the number of different words. And uh, here we have some measure of the number of words, which is around a million in the English language. So all the documents are gonna be classified into what words they have and how many uh, entries in each word. And according to um, this survey here in 2009, the English language crossed the million word threshold. And that millionth word was the uh, sort of interesting word, Web 2.0. And currently a new word is created um, every 98 minutes. And um, that comes from um, one survey. Here's another survey looking at books digitized, digitized by Google. Um, this actually is not here. Um, here are the number of words, and we're up to again a million here from Google Books. And here's this other survey at the top here, which was also at a million. And uh, here's the Oxford English Dictionary is actually less than 500,000. It's got higher standards. Notice the total number of words in this Google digitization from English for English was 361 billion. 
and not so many in some of the other languages, but the total is around uh, 500 billion. Big numbers, big data. Here's a, the size of the World Wide Web, which um, comes from, which is estimated in this web page here by uh, running simple queries and finding out uh, how many responses you get to that, and knowing from uh, general principles what fraction of the documents uh, would uh, satisfy by those queries. So if you look in um, up to 2013, we have the size of the web for Google is about, uh, about uh, 45 billion. But then something funny slightly happened. Something funny happened because it's changed to 15 billion. I assume some definition changed or something changed, or maybe Google's um, algorithm changed or something like that. But uh, the web page didn't comment on this. So, you know, very few things these days actually go down. Here we have the size of Google's web decreased a lot. But it's still pretty big of 15 billion. <coughs> Is people love graphs. It's a, computer scientists are obsessed by graphs, and um, so you can uh, study the uh, structure of the web by the graphs produced by uh, having web pages which point to other web pages and get pointed to. So all the hyperlinks effectively define a graph, and you can look at all sorts of distributions of. Uh, of the um, number of pages with different number of in and out links and how they're connected together. And whether you can go from always go from one page to another page or whether there are clumps of pages which are cut off. It'd be easy to make a clump of pages that are cut off. Put up 10 web pages pointing to each other and don't let anybody point at it by, by not telling them about it. So until somebody finds them, you'll definitely have an isolated subset. So here's an actual picture of the web um, with the um, number of pages in various categories. This is pretty old. This is another interesting feature about this field. Some of the more interesting numbers and structures come from papers 10 to 15 years old, because uh, nobody's ever redone it. Partly, partly because the data is so big, but also because it's secret. At the beginning, it wasn't so secret because um, wasn't so valuable, now it's too valuable. So here we have a bunch of vertices with links going into them, bunch of vertices with links going out of them. We have a sort of homogeneous core with links going in and out. We have things sticking out of this thing, dendrites, 44 million here. And then we have disconnected components, 17 million. So this is the so-called bow tie structure central core in and out sections. And there's about a quarter of the web in the various parts, the in, the core, the out, and the rest. So we, we've already pointed out that um, the key feature of web pages is that they have um, links going into them and links going out of them. And here's a right well, again, you know, it's an unfortunate, rather old document defining um, a histogram of a uh, number of times a, there are um, links going in and links going out of documents. It does it for two types of two types of ways of getting documents. One is the raw data of actual number of links in, in, in documents, a so-called hyperlink graph. And the other one is the user browsing graph, which comes if you actually go to web logs and follow the click-through of users and see what they do. Um, so both of these are par laws. The par is actually around two for both cases. And um, <clears throat> this par law behavior is typical of many complicated things in life. Lots of complicated things fall off like par laws here, like uh, for if the, here the number of Pages with n links falls off roughly as one over n squared. And um, many, there is a lot of work in network and web science discussing these parallels. <clears throat>